Although life can sometimes be challenging and full of obstacles, a positive approach can help to rise above the problem. Students across the country have discovered people in their communities who possess the power of a positive outlook and have found the reward of living with this optimistic influence. Our first story comes from Winter Park High School in Florida. Winter Park is a suburban city located north of Orlando in Orange County. Winter Park is well known for its stately trees, brick-lined streets, museums, vibrant lakes, and fine shops along Park Avenue. Founded in 1923, Winter Park High School is one of the first high schools in Orange County Public Schools, the ninth largest school district in the United States. Winter Park High School is nationally recognized for its high achieving performing arts and athletics programs. Out of the 3,800 students enrolled at Winter Park, many attended Domerick Elementary School, located in Maitland, adjacent to Winter Park. Here at Domerick, students discover a love for learning from their inspiring teachers in state-of-the-art facilities. But one recently created program inspires students to learn new skills away from technology. On Friday afternoons at the Domerick Elementary School Library, students are brimming with excitement and anticipation. Not because it's the start of the weekend, but because it's chess club day. I, I played for the first time. It was like, I don't know how to explain it. It was sort of when you move the piece, like, and then they're coming at you with like something else. It made you think a lot harder. At first, I didn't know how to play. Then my dad teached me. And every day I sung, soon to got better, um, on summer break. And then um, this paper came up with all different activities after school. And I saw chess go, I want to join this. But chess isn't the only thing that makes this club great. It's also the positive environment that librarian and head chess coach Marcy I provides. So in th you have three minutes to figure out how the king and the queen would get that king. Don't you wish you had that over? I don't get them, try to make them be quiet and um, terribly obedient because I think it just squelches what is just starting to build in them, which is this excitement about obliterating the other person's pieces. <laughs> Miss Ike's positive teaching style doesn't fly under the radar with her students. Even they know that she has a teaching superpower. She just makes it seem like it's really fun. She knows some professional players. I don't know any. When she does it, she sort of like, because I know some seizures, they don't like say it in a nice way. They scream at you and you do it. She doesn't. She like reminds you and tells you over and over again until you get it. I think it's just like a great way to learn it. It's really a closeness, even though they're competing and their opponents there's kind of a mind meld <laughs> and I see them look forward to it. Strategizing in advance is one of the hardest components of chess. Luckily it's third grader Emma's favorite part. Um, like if I'm a little frustrated or something then chess seems to help with that. And chess club hasn't just changed Emma. It's even inspired students who graduate from Domerick to start their own chess club at Maitland Middle School. So at Domerick, we like had a chess club and um, a lot of people enjoyed it. But then you go over to Maitland Middle and no one has a chess club. So we're like, well, we want to get better at chess and do tournaments, but we don't have a chess club to do it through. So then we started a chess club. Well, I play football, baseball, and soccer, and I enjoy those sports, but I feel like chess engages a different part of my brain that I wouldn't normally use in sports. And so it's just easy to hang out and have fun. So whether your favorite figurine is a knight, a bishop, or even the queen, Dombrick's Chess Club pieces students together from all backgrounds to create a thriving, positive community that inspires others to continue their love for the game. For our next story, we leave the chessboard for some bear hugs in New Jersey. The Southern Regional School District is located on the Jersey shoreline. It serves students from Stafford and Ocean Townships, as well as the six oceanfront communities of Long Beach Island. Due to its proximity to Atlantic City, New York City, and Philadelphia, the student body is growing. The school of over 2,000 students is recognized nationally for its commitment to excellence in academics and athletics. Here, we meet a family with a child who had a difficult start in life, 
but is sharing hugs with other families experiencing the same challenges. Samantha Brummer is a senior at Southern Regional High School. She loves being in school and is excited for the opportunities that await her after graduation. From the outside, she looks like a normal teen, but 19 years ago, her story wasn't so simple. Samantha's mom, Tracy Brummer, always dreamed of having a big family. At 26, she was pregnant and an excited mom to be. Early into the pregnancy, Tracy found out that her child was not growing at a normal rate. The doctors gave her baby a slim chance of survival. My decision was if she grows even one hair, we're going forward. We knew it wasn't going to be normal and we didn't even know once she came out if she was even going to live like for five minutes. Samantha Tracy Brummer was born on November 26, 1999. She only weighed 3.8 pounds. The NICU doctors and nurses slowly tried to feed her. She actually lost weight. Everything that went in her pretty much came out. A month into her stay, which happened to be Christmas Eve, they actually transported her to Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. We knew nobody or anything, so it was probably one of the scariest nights of you know our time. One of the things that was a very big bright spot for me, waking up the next day and going down to her isolette. There was toys all around her. What made me happy is that the kids in these hospitals on Christmas, they, they're being remembered. We finally got to leave in April. It was six months before she ever came home. She went home with a central line in her chest, which is, goes into her main vein of her heart, which is called a Broviac. And that Broviac supplied her with all her nutrients. And then it actually went to a G-tube, which is a hole in her stomach. That's where we would feed her. And so for seven and a half years, she was hooked to a pole between 15 and 24 hours a day. My mom sat us down. I was like five and Sam was six and told us about her experience in the hospital. With my older sister. Even though a lot of situations were bad, the first night at CHOP really made an impact on her. That conversation is how Bear Hugs began. Bear Hugs is a nonprofit organization that gives new teddy bears to children in the hospital during the holidays. We started in 2007 and we delivered 17 bears on Christmas Eve. We scarve the bears with our signature rainbow scarf and then we also tag them and it has all our information on it so once the kids get them they know where it's coming from. And then we put them up around my living room couch. Just such a good visual picture for everyone to see how much we are giving to the hospital. Once we went up and started giving out the teddy bears to the kids our first year, we all agreed that we need to do this every year. And we wanted to reach more and more kids. What helps them surpass their goal is the help from their community. The biggest supporter is the Moose Beach Haven Lodge 1575, who contributes funds for over 100 bears. Other fundraising efforts include support from teachers and students, pancake breakfasts, and the Stafford Fall Festival where they sell items and share the story with the town. This year, in 2018, we brought 571 bears. Although we've grown bigger, the feeling is still the same. We see the kids pick out a bear and they give it a big hug. And they do this on their own, the parents don't even help. I still remember how happy I feel when I give out the bears and my heart feels like joy and happiness. They forget about what's happening in their lives at the moment. When parents ask me questions and I'm able to say, I started this because of my daughter being in the hospital. All of them say the same thing, wow, that gives us so much hope that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Samantha will graduate this coming June from Southern Regional. Something that seemed so impossible 19 years ago now is a dream come true. Being placed in foster care can be devastating, especially as a teen who is close to aging out of the system. But our next story follows a young lady from Florida who found foster care and life beyond to be a blessing. Pinecrest School is located less than 10 minutes from Fort Lauderdale Beach. A thriving tourist destination with over 15 million visitors annually, Fort Lauderdale is known for its sunny weather, beaches, and growing public art scene. Pinecrest students come from all across South Florida to learn and grow under their motto of education, character, leadership. With over a dozen student-run clubs focused on giving back to the community, students dedicate much of their time to aiding local organizations. One of those organizations, Best Foot Forward, has helped Adriana Turner keep a positive mindset through her struggles in the foster care system. My mom was a real bad alcoholic, you know, like 
I can't really remember a time when I've seen her sober. When Adriana Turner was in middle school, she went to go live with her grandmother. But that too was an unstable living situation and she soon entered foster care. I was removed from my home along with my twin sister at a pretty late age, about 16, almost 17. When I first entered the care and everything, I was like, oh, they came five years too late. After being placed in the foster care system, Adriana found Best Foot Forward, a nonprofit organization that supports foster care youth academically and helps them to keep a positive mindset. One Saturday morning, um, Debbie and Donna came from Best Foot Forward and they brought like all of this food. Donna Biazzi, one of the founders of Best Foot Forward, so many foster care youth drop out of school after they aged out of the system. That's why she made it her goal to help people like Adriana. We saw that there was a disconnect between child welfare and school. We wanted every kid that was in foster care to have the same opportunities as any other kid. Adriana says thanks to Best Foot Forward, being placed in foster care was a blessing in disguise. They provide not just educational support, but honestly like life support. According to the National Foster Youth Institute, less than 3% of children who have aged out of foster care earn a college degree at any point in their life. Best Foot Forward is helping Adriana beat those odds. Along Adriana's journey, they helped her apply to college, develop study skills, and stay on her academic path. I'm majoring in sociology right now at FAU, so I want to use my sociological skills and research skills to help, you know, communities and work with nonprofits, you know, and kind of pay it forward. While working towards her positive mindset, Adriana is hoping to help other youth do the same. Our next story from West Ranch High School in California is about overcoming a physical condition and finding liberation in the water. Santa Clarita, with over 30,000 residents, is the 24th largest city in California. Santa Clarita has been a popular film site for many movies and TV shows. Students at West Ranch High School, home of the Wildcats, are encouraged to get involved in their own individual ways. One incoming Wildcat, Drea Brink, has had to find her own positive mindset throughout her life, even while dealing with a difficult condition. Drea Brink is one of the most hardworking and sweetest young girls you will ever meet. She's super passionate and positive everywhere she goes, despite her challenging and painful condition. When I first found out that I had scoliosis, I wasn't as concerned because I was not aware of all the challenges that I would face. Scoliosis is a curvature in the spine that can take on two shapes, a C-curve or an S-curve. While scoliosis is very common in the United States, there is no known cure. Drea must perform breathing, stretching, and strength exercises to help keep the curve in her back from getting any worse. The problems that came with my condition caused me to change my everyday lifestyle. I have to wear a brace 24-7, I can't wear certain clothes, and I cannot participate in most athletic activities. Some things that I do are exercises given by doctors to strengthen my back muscles. Our initial reaction was one of surprise at the severity of the issue and how quickly it came upon Drea from her last visit to the doctor. So as far as it affecting our family and our weekend activities, whether being at the beach, at an amusement park, the mall, if you were to see Drea at any of those places, you wouldn't really know that she has a disability that affects her. She just is Drea. Although it can be very difficult at times for Drea and her family, Drea doesn't dwell on how tough life can be. Instead, she finds a way to use her scoliosis to keep a positive mindset. You think about it, it's like the negativity is not going to get you anywhere. Only the positivity is. And in the future, it definitely helped me because I'll think back on this experience as a positive way to lead through my life. Even if I have a challenge in my life, that if I can persevere no matter what. Because I can think on this experience, not about the negative things, but the positive things. Drea uses her passion and positivity to ensure that her condition doesn't hold her back. One thing that helps her most power through her struggles is her love of swimming. At school, when I remember I'm talking to my friends, I always feel insecure about my brace, but when I'm at swim, that all goes away. I like swimming because it shows me that having sclerosis doesn't limit me to like regular day normal kid activities. I can go to swim and be a normal kid. Well, Dre is one of my 13, 14 athletes. She's a gifted young athlete. She, like the others I've coached with disability, doesn't seem to phase them. 
They treat it as a technical thing they can't fix, and it's just the work ethic they put in. They're the best they can be, and that's all that matters to them. We work around whatever needs to be worked around, and it makes them feel as though for possibly the two hours they're in the water with me they're at practice, as though it really doesn't exist. Being able to swim with scoliosis allows me to have a positive mindset that in the future I'll get better. Sometimes a challenge seems insurmountable, especially when you come from another culture. But let's meet a student from Jackson Liberty High School who gives us a unique view of overcoming fear and finding acceptance. Jackson Township is located in Ocean County, New Jersey, about an hour from both New York City and Philadelphia, and a short drive to the shore. It is a thriving and growing community, possibly best known for being the site of Six Flags Great Adventure, a regional tourist destination for both its thrill rides and entertainment. New Jersey's diverse landscape with proximity to urban centers, sprawling farmland and residential neighborhoods makes it the ideal place for one international exchange student to have a positive, fulfilling experience. Exchange programs give students from around the world the opportunity to come to America to experience our culture, customs, and traditions firsthand, which are often very different from their life in their home country. Jemmy, an exchange student from India, was chosen by the YES Exchange program to come to the United States where she attends Jackson Liberty High School. Like many others before her, the transition was difficult at first. The first week I came here, I thought it's going to be so hard for the whole year that I'm not going to end up happy. Everything was different for me, from the food, like talking to people or like the clothes that people wear here, because my culture is totally different. So I so badly wanted to like overcome it, like go talk to people about American culture and learn from them. Jemmy was one of thousands who applied to be an exchange student through the government-funded YES program that gives students a scholarship to travel and experience life in another country, something that most would never be able to do on their own. Peggy Law, a liaison for this program, guides students here in New Jersey and believes the difficult process to even become an exchange student requires a certain mindset to push through times of doubt. They go through an application process and then their application is screened and they're chosen from that, strictly from what they put on their application for interviews. And their interviews are very intense because you have to, during that interview, prove that you are, can be set apart, something that sets you apart from your other competitors. And so there might be a hundred slots and you have over a thousand kids who have just been chosen from the application process. So the amount of stress that, that puts on a student is overwhelming, especially at such a young age, because some of these kids are 14, 15 years old. The entire process, from applying and interviewing to being chosen and having to assimilate into foreign culture, can be jarring and stressful to many students. This is where keeping both an open mind and positive attitude can really help with a smooth transition and an overall enjoyable experience. It was super stressful. I had no idea. I, I thought that I'm not going to go through it because every other kid's than me. I thought like they're all smarter than me, then I'm like nothing to them. But I knew I was chosen by my organization for a reason to achieve something here and to learn and to experience many things in America. So I got to push through it. I can end up having a good time in America. Jemmy was chosen in part because of her optimistic and outgoing personality. After exchange students are selected, they are matched with a fitting host family based on that personality. Host families give exchange students a place to call home during their time here in the U.S. while supporting, guiding, and helping them through their experience. In Jackson, New Jersey, Laura Tonra and her family make it their priority to ensure students feel like they are a part of their family, too. Having a positive mindset when you're an exchange student is one of the most important things that they have to learn. When you're an exchange student, you leave everything you know, you leave your country, you leave your culture, you leave your friends and family and loved ones to be able to come to another country that's extremely far from where you lived to live with a family that you've never met before. you And it's very easy to get frustrated. And when an exchange student first comes, it's very easy for them to slip into depression and homesickness. And so it's so important to have that positive mindset because it's something very hard and most people wouldn't be able to do it. Once in America, students can still experience doubt and question if they've made the right choice. It took Jemmy some time to be able to break out of her shell, but when she did, she was able to get the most from her journey, build friendships, and through the involvement in her new community, make unforgettable memories. 
I spoke to my mom and she was like, you can go, it's your choice. I was so scared in the beginning that I don't even know who I'm going to live with or like the school that I'm going to go to or the community that I'm going to live in. But then I still like wanted to go and I wanted like to step out of my comfort zone and to be bold, to say to everybody that exchange or is not easy. As her inspiring journey comes to an end here in the United States, Jemmy will not only take some amazing experiences back with her to India, but also a new outlook on life. Jamima took the opportunity to learn about American culture while simultaneously inspiring others here to follow their own dreams. She learned that we are more the same than we are different, and those valuable lessons will carry with her throughout her life. And those lessons, combined with her enduring positive mindset, will help the world feel a lot smaller. We have shared five unique stories of people who, despite difficult life challenges, made a conscious choice to find a constructive path to help others and to live their best life. They have shown us how finding a positive mindset can change a life.